Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Legends Reborn patch notes. It just hit the website, so we're going to go through it. I'm just going to cover the key points because it is extremely long. If you want to read it for yourself, it is in the link in the description below. So first of all, we'll be talking about the event dungeons. So the first one is the Ring of Reckoning. So the Ring of Reckoning, there's basically going to be a dungeon that you can go in now. You have to read the letter first. And then you can fight the Longue. And then the Longue has three different stages. So there's Bristle with Rage. And then when you complete this one, there's the first level, you get 800 EXP and 5 Lucky Revitalizers. When you complete the second one, which is Uncontrollable Rage, you get 800 EXP and 1 Legendary Orb. Remember that the Legendary Orbs are the event currency. And then finally, on the third stage, All the Rage, when you complete this, you get 30,000 EXP, 3,000 Reputation, 10 Naru Coins, 2 Legendary Orbs, and 1 Longway's Blade. So you do need to complete the third level in order to get the Longway's Blade in order to craft your Grand Celestial 9 weapon, well the quote unquote 1 hour version of the Grand Celestial 9 weapon. However, if you defeat the third stage within the time limit, you'll be able to spawn the fourth stage. And when you spawn the fourth stage after you beat it, you'll be able to get an offering that you can put on the brazier and you'll get extra rewards. You'll get the Resurgent Emblem, which is the second event currency that you need in order to get the good stuff. So that's the first dungeon. The second dungeon is Desolate Mausoleum. The rewards is 30,000 EXP, 4,000 Reputation, 1 Legendary Pouch, and 1 Infernal Forge. Remember, you need the 1 Infernal Forge as well as 1 Longways Blade to craft the quote-unquote 1 hour Grand Celestial 9 weapon. Then the last dungeon is the Burning Mausoleum. This is the hard one and it gives you 30,000 EXP, gives you 6,800 reputation and 6 resurgent emblems. The Burning Mausoleum is going to be relatively difficult so make sure that you do pick up the Inferno Forge as well as the Longways Blade and craft the 1 hour version before jumping into Burning Mausoleum. Or even better, get your 7 resurgence emblems and 5 gold and create the Fleeting Flame Weapon Chest for 1 day. It's the same thing as the Grand Celestial 9 weapon but instead of lasting for 1 hour, it lasts for 1 day. So this weapon is going to be extremely strong. So there have been some questions out there and some concerns about this weapon. So the Fleeting Flame weapon or the Grand Celestial 9 weapon basically can be used in all content. However, there is a question that's been going around on the forums right now and I'm kind of curious myself. Can this weapon be used in Battlegrounds? Because if you could use this weapon in Battlegrounds that does give a lot of players an unfair advantage because you're going to be running in with Grand Celestial 9 weapons and to a lot of people who've worked really hard on upgrading their weapons it's going to kind of feel unfair. So we don't know if we can bring these weapons into Battlegrounds. However, these weapons should work in dungeons normally. So over here, Hime, she's going to be asking the dev team to get confirmation. So down here is a bunch of changes on all the classes. I'm just going to be covering two classes, the Sumner and the Gunner. However, again, link is in the description below, so you can click on it and read it for your specific class to see what has changed. True Friend can be used by consuming 30% of the Summoner's HP when the Familiar does not use True Friend. So True Friend is your X skill, it's your 5 second iframe. So we know as Summoners that when our cat is dead, you're not able to use your 5 hit iframe. However, now they're changing it so that even if your cat is dead, you'll still be able to use your 5 hit iframe. However, at a cost at a cost of 30% of your maximum HP, which is quite a significant amount, but at least you can still use your iframe, so that's going to be pretty nice. So we're getting a buff on Way of the Thorns, which is the Earth spec. Whenever we activate Daybreak, which is our level 60 passive, Burtoss now increases boss attack power by 60 for 15 seconds, and using Daybreak with Wild Nettles increases boss attack power by 160 for 15 seconds. So this is extremely good, extremely strong, uh, it's just more damage for Earth Summoners, which is very, very nice. So the Gunner is just getting a lot of bug fixes. The main bug fix is this one right here. Fix the issue where Unload cannot be used more than 11 meters away during Firefall and Destruction with the Kickback talent. So this only applies to Fire Gunners, but that's the Destruction build. And it's basically whenever you used Firefall and you had the Kickback talent, which knocks enemies backwards every time you use Unload, when the enemy was further than 11 meters away, you could not hit them with Unload. There was this bug that was really annoying, however now they're fixing it, so that's very good. So Shadow Gunner is getting a very significant buff over here. So Way of the Undertaker. On accurate first hit of Roulette, which is your level 60 passive, whenever you use Scorched Earth, boss attack power is now increased by 200 for 10 seconds. This is a very very nice change. 
because this is a guaranteed change. So the thing about roulette is it's random. There's four different buffs it can give you. And then every time you use Scorched Earth, which is your V, it gives you a random buff. However, other than those random buffs, now it's also guaranteed that we at least get the 200 boss attack power plus the random buffs. So this is a very good change. Now the Shadow Gunner has some consistency in their passive because Roulette's passive is very, very random. It's very RNG. As for Way of the Destruction on Accurate Guns Blazing, which is also their level 60 passive, on Unload, boss attack power is increased by 60 for 5 seconds within a certain range. This is also a very good buff because you're unloading constantly and now getting this extra 60 boss attack power is definitely very nice. So I'm not going to cover all the other classes. Again, if you want to read it, link is in the description below. So next up over here are Dungeon Raid changes. So they're reducing the difficulty on Temple of Illuvian, Scion's Keep, Nightfall Sanctuary, Ransack Treasury, Shadow Moor, Dream Song Theater, and Brood Chamber. So they didn't tell us what the exact changes are. I have a screenshot over here that Ekagen posted on a forum post earlier. So I'm just going to go over them. However, please Please take this with a grain of salt as I have not cross-checked this. So I will be checking this when the servers go live and when we do our actual raids, I will be testing out and making sure that all these changes are indeed in place. So what they're saying is, Twilight Temple boss 1, you don't get knocked back from the 3 hit attack, so you no longer need to home and block that. However, you know, you still want to do it just to avoid damage. And other than this, there was another change where they talked about the cylinders. So you don't need rescuers anymore, you can just do it like the weekly, where the marks can just run into the cylinder, tab escape, and run out. I'm not sure about that change, however, if it is like that, then boss 1 has become significantly easier. Twilight Temple boss 2 is we no longer die if we have the wrong mark in matching, the ground slam deals less damage both in AoE and initial hit. Boss 3 is the boss no longer heals from a failed scorch mark or like a failed mechanic. And the Ember Mark, the part where you get knocked up into the sky, you don't take any damage anymore. And during each phase, you can let four rockets hit the wall instead of two. And then as for boss four, the bar doesn't fill up when you get hit. The light bar and the dark bar, and that fills up depending on who gets hit. So now for Vortex Temple, for Twin Asuras, or the first boss, now the boss can absorb five orbs before wiping instead of three. So boss two or the Great Thrall has been buffed. I don't actually know what's changed here because I don't know the normal mechanic. I only know the cheese mechanic. So uh, Vortex Temple is going to be a little bit interesting this week because I don't know the normal strategy on how to do boss 2. So uh, we might just brain dead DPS it or see what happens. I'm not sure. Boss 3 or SK, we no longer need to do Conduction. And the heal from failing to do the drive is lowered. This is not a necessary change, but you know, now it makes it possible to solo the dungeon because you can fail conduction. As for boss 4, now Hive Queen heals a lot less from the spiders, and that's it. However, I believe boss 4 still has the bug bomb bug, or I don't even know if it's a bug anymore. We just kind of live with it. So when you do KD Hive Queen, just get out of the middle of that DPS zone because the bug bomb's going to hit there. They did not fix that. Other than that, they've reduced the cost in order to get your legendary equipment or your stage 2 equipments, which is like your King's Gloves, your Sky Inheritor's Ring, your Sky Pearl's Earring, your Sky Sunder Necklace, and your Horizon Belt. So these, a lot of these are PvP oriented. However, you're now able to get it for a lot cheaper. Instead of 200 Hellion Cores, it's 100 Hellion Cores. You can also get them with Moonlight Buds, which is at the Moon Refuge place. Or you can also get them with Tawny Stones at MSP. So other than that, I just want to reiterate that they're changing the drop system. So for the following dungeons, this is what's going to be changed. So Naru Sanctum, Ebon Drake Lair, Starstone Mines, Drowning Deeps, and Ransack Treasury. When you kill the bosses and if it drops the legendary piece of equipment, what's going to happen is it's just going to drop a box. You're going to open the box and it's going to let you choose whether you want the Divine Dragon Bracelet or you want the Tiger Bracelet. For Ebon Drake Lair, it's going to be the Inheritor's Ring or the Sky Shatter Ring for Starstone Mines, the earrings, the belt, and the necklace, so forth and so on. And in raids, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to drop an accessory box. So for example, it's going to drop a ring box. So when they open that ring box, it's going to give them a choice whether they want the ring for their wind spec or their earth spec or whatever, and they can pick that. And then for the last boss, when you kill that, it's going to drop a box and you're going to be able to open it and get it for whatever class you need it for. So for example, if I'm playing a summoner, I'll be able to choose a barb for my Aransu weapon. 
And then when I kill it on Nightfall Sanctuary, I'll be able to choose the Light Stealer's armor or the wings or the aura, depending on what I need, etc. So that's a really nice change so that no loot is gone to waste, which is pretty nice. However, in some raids, I guess it's going to become like a free-for-all now because everyone's going to be fighting for loot now. So uh, there's that. But that's about it for this patch notes. There's a lot of content to read, especially on the skill balancing. So I really do recommend you to go read for your classes. There's a couple classes that have been changed significantly. One is Force Masters. So if you are playing a Force Master, definitely go into the patch notes and read up and see what's changed for you. But yeah, hopefully this video helped. If it did, I would appreciate a subscribe as it really does help out my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heals the boost so